The S33 from United Grinding is a universal grinder. Now, a universal grinder has both an OD wheel and an ID wheel. We've shown you both in previous videos, but now I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up the ID spindle. So enough about that, let's get grinding. So there's gonna be three components that make up our ID spindle. There's gonna be the main shaft, the mounting arbor, which gets threaded directly into the main shaft. And then once it's all the way threaded in, we mount our wheel. Today, we're gonna to be using a Tyrolet RAA 100 grit pink wheel. And all it's gonna do is it's gonna slide onto the shaft and we're gonna epoxy the center. So ID wheels can be mounted a variety of different ways. There's screw in, there's glue in, and you can even get some permanent ones where the wheel is fixed to the mounting arbor. So a benefit of having these is that the mounting arbor is interchangeable, it's just screwed on. That gives you the ability to change wheels out as you go. So in order to mount this wheel, the first thing I did was I scuffed up the face with a file, that way it gives the epoxy a good bonding surface. Then I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of alcohol so once that's clean, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing my epoxy. I'm gonna start with the resin, then I'm gonna add some hardener, and I'm gonna use a coffee stir stick. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coat the face of my arbor. Now another benefit of doing this is you can have multiple wheels mounted. That way as the wheel gets small, you can go ahead and just mount another wheel. Now all I have to do now is mount my wheel to my arbor. So it's just gonna drop down, give it a nice little spin. I'm gonna put some epoxy in the center of the wheel. Very important to keep this wheel clean and have a good bond because this wheel is gonna be spinning anywhere between 20,000 and 30,000 RPM. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna let it sit. So now that I'm done gluing my wheel in, I can go ahead and let that cure. And at the same time, I can go ahead and go to my control and start programming my ID spindle. So while that dries, we can go ahead and program our grinding wheel and our grinding wheel. So while we're at our core panel, we can go ahead and hit programming. Now we're gonna define our grinding wheel. So this is gonna be the first thing you do before you assign a wheel to it. So we're gonna create a new one. So you have the option between using an existing template or create a custom one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom one for our program name, we're just gonna call it Titan Demo. We're gonna save that. For the description, you can go ahead and name it whatever best describes your grinding wheel. So I'm just gonna label it ID Quill 1.0. The manufacturer, I know it's a Fisher. Now for the material number, doesn't really matter. I would just do one. Now material grinding arbor, that's gonna be what kind of material this is made out of. This is gonna be made out of steel. So for our max revolution, we're gonna go ahead and keep it at 45,000 RPM. Now for our deflection length, as you can see, it's labeled by L. You want from the back to the front of the quill, that's gonna be 5.530, 5.530 for our D, which is gonna be the diameter of our grinding quill, 1.263, save that. So once we define our grinding quill, now we can go ahead and define our grinding wheel. We're gonna select 7505, which is gonna be the new program number. We're gonna save that. Now for our comment, here's where we can name it. We can do Titan Demo, so we don't get confused when we marry it to our ID quill. So now we're gonna make sure it's an ID wheel. You have the option with your type of grinding wheel, your OD and your ID. So we selected ID. Your main work direction is either negative or positive. That means as you're grinding in your corrections, you can either move it in X negative or X positive. So it's very important that if you do X negative direction of your grinding, you have to do X negative of your dressing. Now we're gonna do our grinding wheel angle. We're gonna keep it at zero. For the geometry of the grinding wheel, we're gonna select one. That's gonna be the simplest dress. It's gonna be straight across nothing off the face. So the type one geometry of this wheel is gonna be the simplest. It's just gonna be addressed across the OD and not down the face. However, we're gonna address the face upon setup. So now the definition is done, we're gonna to come to main dimensions. For our original diameter, it's gonna be two inches, so 2.016. For our current, that's what we just measured, so 2.016. For our minimum diameter, that's gonna be how small that wheel gets before the machine alarms out. So we're gonna do one point six that way it doesn't dress into the arbor now for original width is going to be the width of the grinding wheel so we have a one inch wheel 1.0015 so 1.0015 and the current is going to be the same as the original now for the minimum width that's how short that wheel can go before the machine alarms out so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and subtract about 10 15 thousandths because that's how much we're gonna dress off that face 
And since we're using a type one, we're not gonna move anymore off that face. So now we're gonna go 0.990. So for our wheel arbor, here's where we're gonna marry the grinding quill and the grinding wheel to each other. That way they're working as one. So we're gonna come here to the yellow folder and now we're gonna select the Titan demo quill that we just selected. So now we're gonna open. That gives me all my dimensions. Now we're gonna go here, here to technology. So the max RPM on this wheel is gonna be 16,234. So 8,000 surface feet a minute is pretty good. Uh, we're gonna keep it at one dressing pass and X, four tenths removal, 4,000 inch per rev across the dress in X and Z. Dressing over travel, everything looked good. Left side, we don't need a profiling allowance because we're not putting a specific geometry. We're only true in this wheel up. Now the abrasives, it's a refined aluminum oxide wheel. The grit is gonna be 100 grit. It's gonna be a Tyrolit 100 grit K wheel. So under the hardness, it's gonna be K, which is gonna be a medium hard wheel. Now for the structure, it's pretty close. So we're gonna select eight. Now everything looks good. So now all we have to do is save it. So now that we've defined a grinding wheel and defined a grinding wheel, we can go ahead and input it into our setup page. We're gonna select CNC configurator. So once we come over here to H1, T3, we can go ahead and change it. Now for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that grinding wheel that we just did. It's gonna be 7505, the Titan demo. We're gonna highlight it. Now we're gonna define that wheel and that quill to our swivel down dressing unit, which is gonna be the dressing unit for the ID wheel. So now we're gonna hit recalibrate, yes. Okay, now we're gonna hit update data, start. Under CNC configurator, you can see that we have to register the dressing tool and calibrate the grinding wheel. Once that's complete, we have officially set up our ID spindle. So once that's done carrying, we can move down to the next process. I just finished programming the quill and our grinding wheel has cured. Now the next thing I gotta do is go ahead and load it up in the machine, dress it and calibrate the grinding wheel. So let's go ahead and rotate our B-axis so we can install our ID grinding wheel. All right, so with our B-axis in position, now we can go ahead and install our grinding wheel. So all we're gonna do is go ahead and screw it in and then tighten it down. So now with our grinding wheel installed, we can go ahead and register our dressing tool with our swing down to the grinding wheel. With our wheel in position, we can go ahead and dress our grinding wheel. my hand control, I'm gonna move my diamond to its first position. Make contact. Now I'm gonna to go to my first position. I'm gonna overhang the diamond just a little bit, that way it starts off the grinding wheel and feeds into it. So now I hit position okay. Just dressing the OD, so what I'm gonna do now is move off the grinding wheel on the left-hand side. That way I can get a dress all the way across. So I'm gonna go Z positive. So for this, I'm just gonna go ahead and overhang it. Hit position okay. Now what I wanna do is I wanna dress down the face. That way I have a true running grinding wheel. So when I calibrate it, it's perfect. I wanna make sure I just come past it. So with that, I can go ahead and register my fourth position and get the dressing. So now that I touched off all my positions, I can go ahead and close the door and hit cycle start and start dressing. So I'm gonna move down in small increments until I start to clean up the outside diameter of that grinding wheel. Now that I cleaned up the outside diameter, I can go ahead and hit position okay, and I can start dressing the face of the wheel. I can hear my diamond touching across the entire surface of that wheel. Now I can hit position okay. What it's gonna want me to do is after I cleaned up the wheel, it wants me to do a final pass, and since I'm not taking off any extra grinding wheel, I don't have to do a profile allowance. So profile allowance, zero. So now that that's complete, I can hit finish and I have registered my dressing tool to my grinding wheel. The next thing it's gonna want me to do is calibrate the grinding wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and move down in my selection and hit calibrate grinding wheel. What I wanna do is I wanna select my cross and that's how I'm gonna to touch off the outside diameter of my grinding wheel and the face. So now I'm gonna make sure my door is closed and I'm gonna hit cycle start. Now I'm gonna install the cross and touch the outside diameter to the tip of the cross. So I just installed my tree. Now I'm gonna move my grinding wheel to the first position. I'm gonna to touch it to this OD right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm touching my grinding wheel to the outside. Now what I'm gonna do is hit position okay and touch the face of my grinding wheel 
with the face of my cross. I want to touch the face of my grinding wheel to the second square. Down into position in X. We're going to go Z negative. We're going to get close. Slow down my increments to a thou. So right there we touched. We're going to back off. Move down in tenths. I can feel resistance of my grinding wheel. I'm going to hit position OK, and I've registered my second position. So after I touch my two positions, I'm going to close the door and hit cycle start. What's going to happen is that wheel is going to go out. It's going to rotate to my probe, and I'm going to probe where I touched my wheel at. I'm gonna wipe off my cross and move my probe into its first position. So I wanna keep my probe off about 100 to 200,000. Have my probe in position to where it's not touching the cross, I can go ahead and close the door and hit cycle start. Once I touch the first position, now I'm gonna move my probe down to touch the second position. So once I touch the wheel to the cross in both X and Z, and I probe X and Z where my wheel touched, the last thing I gotta do is hit finish. Now once I hit finish, I have officially calibrated my grinding wheel to my probe, and that's how I'm able to use quick set with my ID wheel. All right, y'all, so we just completed the ID setup on the S33 from United Grinding. Now make sure you stick around, we're gonna be doing some ID grinding in upcoming videos, and always be sure to check out that Grinding Academy so if you like what we're doing and like where we're at, make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.